Yo, what's up guys, Mike Red Fox. In this video, I'm gonna show you the best overclocks on Nexa for every 30 series GPU. It's gonna include some settings and some secret tools that you may not know exist to get the most efficient performance. In case you haven't seen it before, this is my test rig. It has every 30 series card on it, except the 3050. And it has a couple RTX workstation cards as well. And I've been mining Nexa for about a week, doing a ton of work, finding the most efficient settings and learning a lot for all of these specific GPUs. You know, disclaimer, of course, your GPUs will be different. Even a 3070 versus a 3070 may have different settings and overclocks you need to use to get the most efficient. So this video is to show you where I got, get you a good jumping off place, and then give you the overall approach that you need to take in getting the best performance on NexaPow, which is Nexa's proof of work algorithm. So I think we're ready to get started. Let's jump over to the computer here and take a look. Again, we're talking about Nexa. I have no opinions on the project. I'll leave links and links and links and tons of stuff down in the description below, which you'll need for um, doing all the work I'm about to show you in this video. But as always, let's get started right away by looking at the results I'm able to achieve in Hive OS. So you can see all these GPUs, the mega hash that are reporting, and then the wattage that all the cards are using, and I have them all on auto fan right now. And uh, you may have taken a peek and you can see some of the overclocking, but it's certainly not the whole story. You can see my core lock that I have within HiveOS for all these GPUs. And as always, we'll jump right away uh, and take a look at the hash rate results and the full story of all of the overclocking that needed to happen for these GPUs. That includes the core lock, core offset, the memory lock, and then ultimately the voltages that the GPUs uh, wound up running at with that core lock. And you can see the efficiency here, and we'll come back and take a look at some of the best performing GPUs later in this video. Um, but you're gonna need some mining software to get started, right? And the miner to use right now is WildRig. 36.2 beta is the current release as of making this video. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. And yes, I can validate that it improved Nexapow performance for me from seven to I think 18% across uh, all these GPUs. Um, so I think we can get started here on the overall approach to getting uh, the most efficient on your cards with this algorithm, with this miner. It's quite different than what I've had to do before. It includes running some scripts, includes uh, using a tool I have not used before. And I'm gonna walk you through all of that right now. So let's go back over to HiveOS. And when I go to my flight sheet, uh, what you can see that's a little different here is I don't have a core offset. I don't have a core lock. I don't have a memory lock in here. In fact, uh, the miner can't do it uh, as of making this video. So you have to use another tool built into HiveOS um, to do that work. And you have to call a script, and I'm gonna show you how to do all of that in just a little bit, but I'm gonna show you the why first. So if you're familiar with HiveOS and all this stuff, um, guys, applies you know, to Windows as well. You can jump in their Discord if you need a little help for that. I'll leave a link to that down in the description too. But in HiveOS, um, what you can set, you can set a lock core clock or a core offset, but we need to do both. And typically you will be able to do the other one within the miner, but you can't with this miner. And we need to set a memory lock, not a memory offset, which to my knowledge, you cannot do in HiveOS. You can only do the memory offset. So we need to use another tool to do this for us. And that tool is called NV tool. And you can call it up in Hive and just do NV tool dash H and that will show you the help and all of the things that NV Tool can do for you. We're gonna focus on just two of them for this video. The first and the rule for mining this algorithm is to lock the memory of all your GPUs at 5001. And you can see the command to do that is dash dash set memory, and then we're gonna put the number. So example, you could type NV Tool dash dash set mem 5001, it will set 
the memory lock on every GPU to 5001. And that's the first thing you're gonna do. Lock your memory. The next step that you're gonna do is you're gonna find the core lock for every GPU. And then the last thing you're gonna do is find the core offsets for all your GPUs. At least that's my approach and what has worked best for me. Here's what gets tricky. You just set your memory lock on all your cards to 5001, right? And you're gonna go into Hive OS, you're gonna go, this is really great. Now I'm gonna start finding my core offsets, or my, sorry, my core locks for every GPU. And you're gonna come in here and you're gonna go, all right, this A2000, I'm gonna change it to some other number. Once you do that, it has now reset the memory lock that NVTool set for you, and that memory is now running free, which is gonna up the power and make the cards really, really inefficient. And you're gonna go, wow, that really is annoying. And you could change your core lock. You could come back in Hive OS, hit the up arrow, it'll call up the last command, lock the memory again, and then go back into Hive OS and restart the miner. And you can do that every single time as you're testing, or you can create a script to execute anytime the miner launches. And that's what I recommend to save your sanity. So the script that you're gonna use first is gonna be this one. I'll leave it linked down in the description below. And essentially what it's doing is it's executing that memory lock at 5001 as soon as the miner starts. So you can copy this, paste it into Hive OS, and now what you're gonna do is from there, go over to your miners, extra configuration arguments, and you're gonna put execute, and I'll leave this so you copy and paste it as well, and you're just gonna, you're gonna put execute to execute that script that you created. So this is what's gonna happen. At miner launch, it will execute the script, lock that memory at 5001, wait 30 seconds in this case, you could choose lower amount of time if you want, like 10, 20, 30, I choose 30, just to make sure the uh, overclock set. And then after 30 seconds, the miner will start. So that way, you know, every time you launch this miner, the memory would be locked at 5001. And you can come in here and keep adjusting your core locks, knowing that every time you start the miner, the memory would be locked at 5001. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I hope I explained it well, but that's the approach. Lock memory at 5001, use that script to make sure it happens every time the miner launches, and then essentially come in here and tweak your core lock in increments up and down of 15 and track the amount of mega hash you're getting and the amount of wattage that that GPU is using to find the most efficient settings for your specific graphics card. The last thing you do from there once you've done all of that to reduce wattage even more is find your core offset. You can see the one that I found for all of my GPUs to be really stable and get my watt, uh, voltage really low is 360. I can get my 3070 Ti lower. Uh, I can get it to 400, uh, 460 and get the voltage lowered, but just for ease of the script that I created for this, um, I just keep it all at 360. So what you do then you can come over and adjust that script to now include the core offset. And you can, again, just take this, choose a core offset that you wanna start with. I've seen probably around 200 start there. You're gonna take this, paste it in to Hive OS, just like this. And you don't have to do anything else in the miner because the script's name is the same. And now when the miner starts, it will call up this script, which uses NVTool to set a core offset of 360 and a memory lock of 5001. And you can keep adjusting that script and restarting the miner. And then what I like to do is track the voltage of the GPU. I've showed this in videos before. And in that case, you use NVIDIA dash SMI dash Q dash D voltage and it will show you the voltages for all your graphics cards with the goal of that number uh, to keep going down which means the GPU is using less power if you gets too far down or the core offset is too high you'll get crashes and stuff like that 
But ultimately, that's the approach, and that's what you want to look for, and that's what I track when I enter in the voltages here just to see as I apply more core offset, how low is the voltage going, how low can I get it where that GPU is staying stable. And that's really it. That's the whole approach to mining um, Nexa and the overclocks and the tools that you have to use. And essentially what you're going to do as a recap is you're going to lock your memory. You're going to then find the best core lock for your GPU. And then you're ultimately going to find the best core offset for your rig or for your individual GPUs to get the most efficient that you can in mining this algorithm. And you can see right here, on the screen, we're tracking some efficiency in the miner. The A4000 looking really good. The 3070 looking very, very good. And then the 3090 Ti also coming out looking really good as well. And you can see that same kind of story told in the results that I have here. Again, 3090 Ti, the surprise, always the surprise. Um, 3070, A4000s looking really good too. And then the one that just is terrible on every algorithm that I've tested is a 3080 12 gigabyte, just an awful, awful GPU, so inefficient. I wish I never bought it, but I'm glad I have to test it. So a couple other things. If you want to track your profitability, you can do that on MinerStat. It has Nexa. I don't really talk about profitability often because it just changes all the time. I just want to give you the approach to use and you can look at that stuff yourself. And then the mining pool to use is over at miningpoolstats.stream. It's horrible that there's only really one pool with almost all the network hash rate right now. That's bad for a lot of reasons, but new cryptocurrency, it's currently uh, growing and doing its thing. And so I think that will just change over time. But I hope this video is helpful to you to get up and started. This can be a little bit of a complicated one to get going. So I hope I helped you. But if you have anything to teach me, please leave it down in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button if you did. Sub to the channel for more GPU mining content. Jump in my Discord. Follow me on social media. Links are all down in the description below. And as always, please take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And I'll see you in the next video.